Welcome to Module 3. This module will focus on resumes and cover letters. Your resume is often the first thing an employer sees about you, and most recruiters only spend about six seconds looking at a resume, so it needs to make a strong impression. Your resume is a concise summary of your skills and qualifications, what you have to offer an employer, and why you're a good match for the position and their company. In most cases for students seeking a co-op or internship, and for most students graduating, your resume should be one page. If you have extensive relevant experience or projects, however, you may end up using two pages. For your resume, you want to focus on your academics, skills, projects, experience, interests, and activities. You want to highlight the qualifications for your targeted field, but emphasize what sets you apart from other students and makes you unique. Resumes are used as a screening mechanism by employers, and your main goal with your resume is to get an interview. The resume format most appropriate for a typical student or new graduate is the reverse chronological format, in which education and work experience are presented in descending order, with the most recent listed first. This allows employers to quickly see your history. Here are some additional tips and guidelines. Don't use a narrative format or I statements. Don't include any high school information unless it's an activity is significant. For example, if you were an Eagle Scout, volunteered regularly, or were in a club relevant to your targeted industry. Don't include any personal information. Companies often can't accept resumes with this data, and it has nothing to do with your skills and abilities to do the job. Your resume should be concise and easy to read, neat, well-organized, and with perfect spelling and grammar. If you have typos, the company will think that you have no attention to detail. Don't overcrowd your information. If you have relevant information that goes beyond one page, use two. Be sure to proofread your resume and have it critiqued by your career advisor, who is me, and preferably also someone in your targeted field to be sure you have the technical terminology written correctly. Keep your references on a separate sheet, not on your resume, and include the references name, title, company, phone, and email, as well as their relationship to you, whether they're supervisor or faculty. Here is more information on the specific categories of a resume with sample information. The first category is your contact information and objective. Include your current phone number and email address, preferably your RIT email. A physical address is not necessary to include unless you're looking in a specific geographic location. Also include your LinkedIn URL and any portfolio address you may have. Then add an objective, a concise statement of what you're seeking and your current availability. If you're graduating and looking for a full-time job, you'll want to elaborate briefly on your targeted skills and qualifications. Since your primary role right now is a student, your education section should come next. List all your colleges with RIT as the most recent first. List your degree, which is a Bachelor of Science, and your major, as well as when you expect to graduate. If you have any concentrations or minors, list them as well. List your GPA if it's over 3.0. If it's not, you can choose to list it or not, and you can discuss this with me if you have questions. Add relevant courses so employers can see what you're learning. Remember, you don't want to include any high school information. You use your high school information to get into college and your college information to get a job. Next comes your skills category. Employers like to see a summary of relevant skills at a glance, and then use the rest of your resume to support these skills by showing how you've used them successfully. List all your skills and appropriate subcategories. Use the right buzzwords for your industry. This is why it's good to have someone in your targeted field critique your resume. 
and you also want to include non-technical skills also, as, the, as these are very valued by employers. In fact, the top skills overall for employers are communication, leadership, and teamwork. So every chance you have to gain and emphasize these skills is valuable. You'll want to add to your skills category as you go through your program, courses, projects, and experience. Be sure to add skills that you've gained outside of class on your own. Employers also value initiative. A projects and labs section is important as these show how you've used your skills and course knowledge and often demonstrate teamwork skills. Also add projects you've done on your own as they demonstrate initiative and passion for your field. Emphasize team leader roles as again leadership is a very valued skill by employers. Work experience comes next, and I like the word experience instead of employment, as it implies skills gained rather than just work done. Add both relevant and non-relevant jobs, as all work provides skills you can transfer into other jobs. Often when you're looking for a co-op or internship, you don't have any relevant experience yet. But if you're currently working or have worked over the summers, include those jobs to demonstrate your reliability, teamwork, and customer service skills, among others. You want to use action verbs to describe your responsibilities and emphasize your accomplishments, not just your day-to-day -day tasks. Think about what you achieved by performing your job and how the company benefited from your being there. Finally, include an activities and interests category to demonstrate your well-roundedness. This is another opportunity to set yourself apart from the competition, who all take the same classes as you. What you do outside of class speaks to your individuality and those valuable skills like leadership and teamwork that you've developed with outside activities. You can add a statement at the end of your resume indicating references are available upon request, but I don't recommend this as you'll want to use all your valuable, valuable real estate for relevant information on your skills and qualifications. Remember, references go on a separate sheet and be sure to include your name at the top. You'll want to secure at least three references who can speak positively on your behalf and about different aspects of your skills and abilities. Good references include current or prior supervisors, professors, and even your advisors if they know you well. Don't use family or friends unless you've performed work for them, and always get permission to use people as references. You'll often email your resume to prospective employers, so here are some tips. Always use your RIT email account, so they will see it comes from a college. Name your attached resume file with your first and last name, as companies get lots of emailed resumes. You can attach your resume and may also choose to include a plain text version at the end of your introductory email. Treat any email correspondence with employers formally, using the proper salutation, like Dear Mr. Smith instead of Hi Tom. Try to address your, work, your email to a specific contact person if you have one, or use a general salutation. Dear hiring manager works well. Let's talk about cover letters now. A cover letter is used to introduce you and your resume to prospective employers and to further promote your qualifications for a specific job and company. You want to immediately capture the employer's attention and stimulate their interest in looking at your resume. It also serves to provide an example of your writing ability. There are two types of cover letters, a letter of application, which is in response to an advertised position, and a letter of inquiry, which you use to reach out to a targeted company that doesn't have a position posted. As mentioned, you can send a cover letter in response to a posted position, which is a solicited cover letter, and can be at the request of the employer or because you're really interested in the position. You can also send cover letters to companies you're targeting as part of your job search, unsolicited letters, to introduce yourself and your resume and to talk about why they might be interested in hiring you. Always send a cover letter when you send your resume through the mail to introduce yourself, 
and also when you send your resume through email. This can be an abbreviated cover letter. Here are some keys to effective cover letters. While you usually have one resume that you use to apply to all jobs, cover letters are individual for each company to which you apply. You want to demonstrate your fit with that particular company. It really is all about what you can do for them. So you'll want to research each organization and job to understand the firm's needs and priorities, and then write your cover letter geared towards solving those needs. Try to address your cover letter to a specific person if you have a contact from a job posting or other source like LinkedIn. Your salutation should be Dear Mr. or Ms. and last name, never first and last name. If you don't have a contact, use a professional title like hiring manager. Use your cover letter to define your selling points. What sets you apart from the competition and what are your strengths? relevant to this particular job. Support your strengths with solid examples from past experiences, whether work, projects, or volunteer experience. The idea is to create mini stories or sound bites that support your relevant skills and qualifications. What you don't want to do is just repeat your resume, but take the most relevant aspects and elaborate on them for each particular company and job. Remember, it's all about what you can do for the company, not what they can do for you. Your cover letter should be concise, no more than one page. Use your first paragraph to introduce yourself, state your purpose in writing, and grab their attention. It's great to say why you're interested in their company specifically. Here's an example. The second and possibly third paragraphs are used to sell yourself. Define your strengths and use detailed examples that make the company understand what makes you the best candidate. You want to match your skills to the company's needs based on the job description and your research of the company. Here's an example. End with an action-oriented paragraph. Define the next steps, indicate that you're interested in an interview and will follow up, provide your contact information, and thank the reader. Here is an example. You'll often send a cover letter via email, and here are some tips. Do a test email to yourself to make sure it comes through okay. Include your resume as an attachment and you may want to put a plain text version at the end of the email in case the attachment won't open or the receiver doesn't want to open an attachment. Always include an abbreviated version of a cover letter as part of your email text explaining why you're writing and a summary of your relevant skills with many stories of accomplishments that support those skills. Be professional and formal in your email. Use a business salutation, Dear Mr. or Ms with a last name, and professional language throughout. Again, try to address your email to a specific contact person if possible. Here are your assignments for this module. Please submit your resume and cover letter to the Dropbox by the due dates indicated in the syllabus. You will receive feedback in my courses. Let me know if you have any questions.